Welcome to The Popish Plot. I'm Nate. And I'm Jessica. Today, we are here to talk to you about Sog, Nicholas Black Elk. By which we mean Servant, Servant of, of God. God. Yes, <laughs> I just, I like the abbreviation. It sounds so fun. Yes, today happens to be the feast day of another Native American. St. Kateri Tekequitha. Uh-huh. Or Lily of the Mohawks. Yes. Because I can say those words. There we go. <laughs> So it reminded me of the fact that when we were teaching Sunday school last year, we had on our little whiteboard a kind of a poll of who you think the first native-born male saint for America yes. is going to be. Yes, because there are men who were, lived and worked in America who've been sainted. But they weren't born here. But they weren't born here. And there, there are women who lived and worked here and were born here and have been sainted. But as of yet... There's actually three women. Along with... I said women. Yes, I'm saying. Along with St. Kateri, we, we have um, St. Catherine Drexel and Elizabeth Ann Seaton. But unfortunately, we have not, as of yet, had a male individual born in the United States portion of North America mm -hmm. who has become a saint. Yes, so I thought I would highlight one of them. Um, in part because back before he was even Catholic, he signed a big letter to Pope Leo XIII asking for the canonization of today's saint. Saint Kateri Tekakwitha. And his, like, grandson and other people accidentally met each other in Rome for her, um, I think, beatification. Oh. And discussed the fact that, you know, we think he's a saint. So, tell me, who was servant of God Nicholas Black Elk? Well, we know that he was born sometime between 1858 and the end of 1866. That's a pretty large window. That's eight years. Well, um, he was recorded as being born in the winter when the four crows were killed on Tongue River. So we're not exactly sure when he was born. Yes, and he died either August 17th or 19th in 1950. We are sure on that year. Okay. But still, got two days there. Is this yeah. is this is this like with the, the one saint where? No, no, there was no calendar change. It's just half the things I read said one date, half the things said the other. One or two pointed out. We're not sure which one of the two it is. I'm gonna call it eighteen. Just split the difference. Mm -hmm. Even his gravestone just has like years that were like estimated, as far as I can tell, because I think they went with fifty-eight. Okay. Which is the earliest of those years. All right. Um, it, his gravestone also records his name as Chief Black Elk, even though he was never a, a chief as far as the title of, you know, the leader of warriors. Okay. But he was Lakota Sioux, and apparently in their tradition, it's also an honorary name that's given okay, for so people who've done great things for their people. <laughs> sort of like, sort of like doctor of the church. Yeah, exactly. Okay, all right. Um, also... I do not know how long he's going to stay as being a servant of God because the finalized report from his diocese was sent to Rome. And therefore... Th so it's just a matter now uh, of, a, of a small committee and the Pope to look it, it over and go and say, yeah, no, you, you've done your homework. Yes, as at that point, he would be venerable. All right. So the notes I've got here say that he was a member of the Lakota Sioux. Yep. So he was a Plains Indian. Mm -hmm. Um did he do anything? Was there anything like notable in like history that we that we know he was a part of? Oh, there were many things notable in history. In fact, everyone who probably studied the history of the Plains area is wondering if this is the same Black Elk as his father and grandfather were also named Black Elk. So it's a family name, and you know. Fair, all right. but yeah, he was the one who was Crazy Horse's second cousin. Okay, so he, he, he got into some stuff. Yeah, he fought in the Battle of Little Bighorn. Okay. He was maybe around 12 at the time, but, you know, he did, he was there. He also ended up getting an injury at Wounded Knee. Was it his knee? I don't remember. Possibly. Mm. I just, it would be really ironic if you got a Wounded Knee at the Battle of Wounded Knee. Well, Wounded Knee wasn't a battle, and he was basically trying to get people who were survivors out of the field, so... Okay. But um, those are actually big differences in dates, so there's numerous things he did in the in meantime. Okay, so what else did he do? 
For example, he was part of Buffalo Bill's Wild West show. Woohoo! That's fun. Yes, and he went um, to Europe. He performed for Queen Victoria. And they both well, it tells went you he to was, England, and they it tells had like you a, he was he was he was one of the better performers because yeah, I mean you don't the, take you don't take your B team when you when you got an audience with the Queen. Well, the B team, as you put it, probably went to England, but yeah, only the best one showed up for her private one, which was mm-hmm. like in honor of like her fiftieth year of rule or something. Or maybe being 50. It's Queen Victoria, so... It could go either, it could go either way. Um, but while he was there, he and a few other members that were part of the group that were Lakota got lost or, you know, misheard an instruction or something, and somehow the boat going to America left without them. It sounds like poor planning on, on both parts. I mean, you don't leave until everybody's on board the boat. I mean... Yeah, so um, he found another group that was doing a Wild West show, and they ended up going and touring Germany, France, and Italy. All right, so he got he got around. Yes, yes, and there he learned to improve his English, and he also learned about the different cultures of Europe. Okay. And eventually, he met back up with Wild Bill in England and came back home. <laughs> okay. And then later on, he also performed in other Wild West shows that were less exciting, you know, we're having a fake shootout and more. This is actually about the culture of the people that are here. So. Okay. So, so he's a warrior mm-hmm. and, and and a defender as you said he was trying to get people out of the, mm-hmm. out of the way of wounded knee. He's a performer. Mm-hmm. Um what else do we know about? He like his father, grandfather and various uncles was a medicine man. Okay. So, so healer and and, 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 you know, yep. general, uh, like, spiritual leader kind of a thing. Yes. And he, on top of being a medicine man, was a, and I'm going to have you say it, because even though it's in foreign language that's not Latin, it's still bad at it. Well, based on the way it's written, I would presume that it sounds like Heyoka. Yes, which is a sacred clown. Because when he was about nine, he suddenly got sick for no apparent reason. And had this vision. And, of Ooh. course... Vision? Yes. This vision was, you know, completely in keeping with his Lakota culture. and involved, you know, the great spirit or the grandfather, the thunder people, the four cardinal directions, the earth kind of like as a hoop or a spear and like how we're all interconnected to it. Okay. But it was even, you know, then seen as like a, a, a very big, powerful experiences, even among other medicine men. Okay. So then I, I also see here that, that he was, that he took part in the ghost dance movement, which if I recall, it was sort of like a, 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 a Native American version of a back to the roots kind of a movement. Yeah, getting back to the, the old ways and... Uh, Sort of. It, it 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 was the extreme version of it. Oh, okay. Um, so so not so it's so not so much the peaceful. Let's just go back to when we li- to when we lived out in the wild and did no, our own thing. No, no. The ghost dance. The people who were part of it thought that by you know doing the dance and wearing the the special clothes and stuff that had symbolic meaning, you were a unable to be shot with bullets. Well, okay, hey, that's a thing. I mean, and I'm pretty it, sure that's not a thing, but yes, and and B, if they could just get all the Native Americans throughout America to take part in this dance, uh, the white man would magically disappear. The buffalo would magically return because at this point the buffalo were mostly no, pretty gone. much all extinct. Yeah, and then their life and culture would be reestablished because the first two things were kind of what was destroying their culture and life. Okay. Um, this failed miserably on that front, simply because, although within Cause you, Sue you believes... Because dress, dressing up and dancing doesn't make you bulletproof. Well, yeah, so failed <laughs> that, but because within Sue beliefs, this was very much a, a positive thing. Other Native American groups at the time had, you know, ceremonies and stuff to prevent the ancestors from coming back. They were like... Why would you have a we ghost thing? We want to send thing? them on to the other to That's the, other the worst plane, yeah. thing. Why would you right. do that to your ancestors? So, um, 
it, it, it did not succeed, as you could tell by the fact that we are here and very pale. <laughs> and the, the, the buffalo is still kind of hard to come by. It's getting better, but still. But it, it was another part of his life that showed his deep search for spiritual meaning and you know interest in the spiritual thing. And around that time, he had a vision. And there are different stories on exactly what the vision is, but every story I heard seems to go together, just like... He probably told one friend something and one friend a, a kind of a different part of it type thing. Okay. Um, in which he saw a, a, a great tree, like a tree of life. Tree of life, okay. What? A, a man of what he stated was, you know, unable to tell exactly what ethnic they belong to. Indeterminate race, okay. Uh, with long hair. Long hair. Arms outstretched. Mm, okay, yeah. Holes in his hands. Holes, hold, all right, so, man, long hair, arms outstretched, holes in his hands. And possibly said that he was the son of God it, or the son of the great spirit. <laughs> right, now, I can only think of one person who fits all of, the, all of those uh, criteria. Yeah, and he also probably could only think of one person who could fit that criteria as even before this time, the reservation he was then on was run by Jesuits. Okay. Um, his wife became Catholic before him. He baptized all his kids from that marriage, and then later his wife died, and he got remarried to another woman who was Catholic and baptized all those kids as well. But by that time, he was Catholic because in 1904... He converted. He took on the name Nicholas after St. Nicholas of Santa Claus fame. It's a, it's a very good one to choose. I mean, I've met Santa Claus. He's a, he's a, he's a right, proper stand-up guy. Yes, yes. Sources say he picked it because of his generosity. And also, he was baptized on the Feast of St. Nicholas. Okay. And from there, he went and took his deep spiritual beliefs and used the fact that he was now Catholic to help other people learn the faith. All right. He became what was called a catechist. Okay, which which is not what we would today call a catechist, because no. a catechist is basically somebody who, who either volunteers or gets wrangled into um, teaching children. Yes, yes. Can we force and, and, you to do this job? Are you confirmed? Do you have no you know criminal background? You got the job. <laughs> Whereas back then it was more of a a, a unordained uh, ministry kind of a thing. Yeah, it was it was a lot like all the. He was essentially an evangel. He was essentially a, 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 a missionary slash evangelist. Yes, it was much like all the things that one would do as a deacon that doesn't require being ordained. Okay. So he used his skill at members. Memorizing things and speaking and along with learning because as he was too young to actually go to the, well, he was too old to go to the schools when there were schools because okay. when he was there, there, there were no schools. He had to learn to read English in Lakota to then be able to read and write in those. Okay. Um, but he... He took trips to neighboring reservations. Which, when, for that time, when we're talking about neighboring, we're talking about neighboring. Yes, yes, multiple states. Um, he also ended up talking to Catholic groups all over the nation. Ah. He also would write encouraging slash you know, spiritual lessons in letters that got printed in the local um, newspaper for the Native Americans. Okay. So I believe he wrote them mostly in Lakota, but you can also find English translations of them. And from doing all this, he brought over 400 people to the faith. Wow, 400. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's a lot. Over 100 of them he was a, the godfather for. All right, the... I don't want to say that that's too many, but that 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 feels like a lot. It it does, but there's probably cases where, much like in the New Testament, there were whole families where they just picked the same godparents for the whole household. That, that I suppose that could be just you know, mm -hmm. it's a lot of birthdays and, and, and first communions <laughs> and, and, and confirmations and Christmases and. 
part of the reason why his cause is being brought forth, because if you know anything about someone declaring a saint, yes, they had to be good and holy. But and they have to be dead. And they have to be dead. But the diocese has to believe they're good and holy enough to spend enough time and energy and money on this because it's a long process. All right. <laughs> um, part of the reason is he was noted for combining all the good and holiness of his culture with Christianity. Baptizing his beliefs and such. Yes, yes. He was noted as having the rosary in one hand and the prayer pipe in the other. And, and along with, you know, combining both of these, you know, beliefs, it is very, you know, evident in his later life that all the, you know, killing all the people who said, we have the low ground, we can't lose, what, what was something that he had repented of. Okay. Um, for example, in... I don't know. It sounds to me like he was simply teaching them. To, he was simply teaching them good sound tactics. I'm just saying. It was. It, it's a hard way of teaching, but I mean, some people they, they some people just don't learn. But anyway, um, he wrote one of his letters, um, listing tribes and settlers he had visited, and noting that all of them, whether they were Lakota allies of the Lakota or former enemies, are good people, and he prayed for all of them. Well, there you go. That, that's that's a that's a free that's a forgiving uh, kind of a spirit right there. Yeah. Um. He said, "We all suffer in this land, but let me tell you, God has a special place for us when our time has come." So, although some people look at you know his life and go, uh, uh, you, the the guy who fought in Little Bighorn is who you're you're interested in being a saint. It it, it is clearly his older life. He took the spiritual lessons he learned as a youth, and and put them wholeheartedly into his Catholic Christian faith. Good deal. All right, so that is Servant of God Nicholas Black Elk. Mm -hmm. Any 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 other fun little tidbits you learned during during this thing that just really kind of stuck out to you? Um it is said that he thought there might be a sign from God at his death, and according to sources, Aurora Borealis was super big right then. Okay. And at his funeral, when they're going to the gravestive, it was you know raining until they actually had to go out, and then it suddenly became sunny. Okay. Also, I learned that the Lakota word for Jesus translates to "He who makes live." He who makes live. <laughs> so let's all pray to, to, to He who makes live to, to to help advance the the the, co the cause for canonization for for. Uh, servant of God, Nicholas Black Elk, because he sounds like a fantastic guy. Uh, go down below, and maybe you'd like to do the poll that you know got started. Yes, for the religious head. perhaps you'd like to vote in the poll that I started among our religious head kids for who will be the first canonized saint of of American born descent. Mm -hmm. Other popular contenders are, are of course. Solanus Casey, because he's Sol local. Blessed Solanus Casey. There's also uh, Archbishop Fulton Sheen. There we go. It, I, I'm, I'm a little torn between those two. I mean, hometown hero and, you know, I mean, the guy who brought Catholicism to, like, everybody in America. I mean, you know, Solanus Casey was a great guy, but he was not on primetime, you know, TV shows. Seriously. <laughs> um... And there's also the, the, the new one that, that, that recently happened, which they haven't had the beatification for yet, mm -hmm. but uh, Michael Mc, uh, Venerable Servant of... Venerable... He's uh, Venerable now. He's, he is Venerable now. He's going to become Bless. Blessed Michael McGivney. Uh, who was the founder of the Knights of Columbus? But go down below into the comments and, and and place your votes. If you know one that I have, if you know somebody I haven't mentioned or she hasn't mentioned, throw them in the ring too. Because I, I mean, know there's like two or three others. I just can't think of them at the moment. Because realistically, the it's it's not like a regular race. There's there's no there's there's no it's based on eternity. Everyone wins. <laughs> exactly. Everybody's gonna win at some point in time. Or. Mm -hmm. gonna, but, but we're pretty sure all these people are going to win <laughs> at some point in time. So go ahead and throw a, throw a hat in the ring. Throw somebody's hat in the ring if you want. While you're down there, hit the subscribe button and the bell right next to it so you get notified when our next episode comes out. Give us a like. Or if you really like this and was like, clearly they looked through at least a dozen different things and watched a couple videos, you could always go and share this with a friend. Yeah. 
To be or, like, hey, did you know that someone who totally, you know, beat the army at, at Little Bighorn is now in the process of being a saint? And until next time, remember to live your faith. Love your faith. And share, share that love. love.